we're moving on to a very interesting segment, one that many of you have been waiting eagerly for. 2020 has been an unforgettable year for the Indian media industry. And we all do agree, right? That what does this year, it's been really difficult and what this new year has in store for us, we all would love to know. We believe one man has all the answers and we can't wait to hear him out. So let's invite Mr. Vikram Sakuja, Group CEO, Madison Media and OOH at Madison World for a fireside chat with the man who knows it all, Mr. Uday Shankar, entrepreneur and Fiki president. Believe me, this is going to be a really interesting session. Do join in our online conversation using the hashtag PMAR2021. And here I would like to invite Mr. Vikram Sakuja on screen to take this conversation forward. Thank you so much, Khayati. Okay, guys, it makes it, the person that you're going to be bringing in front of you, he's broken the glass ceiling for all journalists to not only head a, a news channel, but he's also gone on then to most famously and brilliantly lead India's largest sports and entertainment network. And from there, of course, he went on to become the 21st century Fox's APAC head. And then as a transition to a Disney company, he was leading that. Now he's pivoted into a completely interesting, exciting new area of being an entrepreneur. And of course, he is our current Fiki president. He's an absolute visionary, an iconoclast, one of the boldest decision makers that I know, and a chap who definitely calls a spade a spade. It's an absolute pleasure and privilege to welcome him on, this, uh, on this entire dais, Uday Shankar. Hi, Uday. Ah, I can see you've got a Fiki branding behind you. Anything for some free advertising. I've learned it from you and Sambal Sara Vikram. <laughs> okay, we've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to dive right in and really, really looking forward to the session. Okay, let's start big picture. I think you're the first media professional to lead Fiki. What do you think can be advertising and media's role in shaping the entire commerce and industry? It's a, it's a great question. Very interesting one, Vikram. And first of all, thank you very much for having me here. Delighted to be part of this conversation and always, you know, a great uh, experience to, to get into a conversation with you, whether it is formal or informal. I've always enjoyed our, our uh, serious exchange of views. We both believe in what we say. So thank you for having me, even though I've exited media as an, as an executive and professional. But uh, to answer your question, I think, uh, you know, we have somehow punched under our weight in media and entertainment as far as the larger role in, in, in making an economic contribution to the country is concerned also in terms of playing a role in building the brand India, media and entertainment can play a big role. And I think we have not, and I'm not blaming media. I think the country as a whole needs to be aware of that the country as a whole needs to, to, to understand how to leverage the power of that. I mean, if you look at brand us, just imagine the role that Hollywood has played before, you know, I think it, it'll be tough to describe that what, you know, what went global first, the American way of, life or the Hollywood way of life and Hollywood content With, without Hollywood. It, 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 it is anybody's guess whether we would have internalized as much of America and accepted it as seamlessly as we have today in, the, in, in, you know, across the world from the developed part to the underdeveloped part from democracy to totalitarian regime. The one thing which everybody has internalized is this American way. We may disagree with politics. We may disagree with a lot of American issues, but the American way of life. And I think that that's the role that uh, media and entertainment can play in building brand India. And that comes with massive economic upside for the sector and for the country, because there are very few countries who have the strengths, potential strengths that we have in India in terms of our our heritage of storytelling, rich cultural tapestry, the diversity, nuances of our culture, and uh, our ability to tell great stories traditionally. On top of that, 
today as the world has gone is getting disrupted by technology we also have you know one of the strongest and most uh, sort of broad based technological infrastructure in the country our engineering talent our capability to you know visualize globally indian engineering talent is what is powering the technological advances we should be able to do that here but uh, unfortunately we haven't done that so far but i think uh, there is there is a huge opportunity for us to do that great so today's forum is one of actually talking the adx in advertising now specifically the advertising and marketing sector for the longest time has been hovering at is about 0.3% of the gdp for developed countries i mean of course you took the hollywood example but purely from an advertising standpoint mm -hmm. why do you think that has been the case out here and what does it take to really stimulate adx as a share of gdp again it's it's a it's a very good question the answers are not easy to come by but i'll tell you what my view on this is that first and foremost we are still in early days of building the culture of advertising advertising as a as an intrinsic part of a business enterprise it is still considered first of all big companies game it is still considered you know uh, something that uh, that you it nice to do it's also there is a little bit of un understanding in traditional entrepreneurs minds that it is uh, it's a bit of a vanity play it's not seen yet by and large across the board you know from big corporates of course it's very established but uh, as you go down the pop strata uh, of business you know uh, it it's still not seen as something that's an essential tool of your business of of you know building your brand is is a is a, is, is a strategic lever of uh, creating value and getting getting market share getting creating a premium uh premium share of the segment those things are still not uh, widely established and i think we as media professionals across the buy and sell side we haven't done a great job of of evangelizing you know if you look at the number of brands that advertise in india that that number is still really really small it's become it's grown dramatically because of digital penetration that has come in but uh, if you look at traditional media tv print and uh, radio etc that number is really small for a country of the size and diversity of india until you do that and until we all go you know just selling inventory and buying inventory is is certainly not the best way of participating in the economic value creation that's going on i think uh, media can play a much much deeper and larger role the problem is that it's my community and you know who, who, whatever i am today i owe it to the you know to the community of media and media uh, persons so with full gratitude if i can say we have we have taken you know we we have been somewhat short sighted we have uh, we have we have undersold ourselves that you know we have uh, run our businesses we are extremely competitive within our own narrow set uh you know even to the extent of destroying value for for one another but we haven't you know we haven't gone ahead and painted a larger vision for for the world and created a central space for the community of media and entertainment in that larger world in that larger Wonderful. vision and okay. that is where the big problem is completely agree now we as we are seeing and you you mentioned that some of the growth the number of advertisers are coming through digital over the times years we've seen that print used to have roughly about 2 lakh advertisers 2 to 3 lakh digital also has about 3 4 lakh tv is in the maybe 10 to 15000 range and so on and so forth now these are kind of numbers that we are talking the growth momentum of course is right now all behind tv and digital at this Correct. point do you believe that this sort of momentum or this kind of trend is going to continue and will some of these other mediums like print and uh, maybe print radio will out of home probably not but will these really die out as we see in some of the other markets or do you see a sustaining power to them look i think uh, 
these are tough days ahead for a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of segments like print and uh, out of form and radio, etc. They've been devastated during COVID. I don't read too much into that devastation, you know, and I don't really, you know, I, I saw this really, really deep and uh, comprehensive presentation by Sam and the data is, you know, scary, but I think uh, that will pass. But I've always believed that each crisis just, you know, manifests itself on, on, on individuals and businesses and only brings out the latent strengths and weaknesses during the crisis. The crisis is the best uh, sort of spotlight for the latent uh, weaknesses and strengths. And I think what we see with print is, of course, uh, distribution of papers was uh, was disrupted and there was no advertising happening. So you, you see those contractions. However, it was already a trend that uh, that just got amplified dramatically. And uh, if you're not seeing the bounce back as dramatic as you're seeing in, you know, something like, let's say, TV, and I have view on TV, but uh, if, if you see that, it's primarily because the businesses, you know, I mean, the newspaper business in this country has been built entirely on the back of advertising. That is a suicidal way to build a business. If you have two streams of revenue, why would you go and kill one stream of revenue? Just imagine a three-year-old could tell you it's not an act of genius. And for 30 years in this country, we hailed those entrepreneurs and managers who pushed that line of uh, strategy as amazing visionaries because in the short term, it worked for them. In the long term, everybody is dead. So this is, this is, this is really, really, I, I don't understand this. I, you no, know, we all, that's, that's a great segue you're giving me. So I'll come to your subscription versus advertising bit in a second, but you also said you had a view on TV. Let's hear that. So again, the same on, you know, the, the view about TV, TV has done in the last 20 years, it has done better than, than most of the segments. And I think TV has created a national market for content and more than that for advertising that, uh, that's pretty commendable. I have to say that, uh, star played a key role in that, but the other te television networks are the bigger ones in particular. And some of the, you know, some of the stronger regional networks have played a very big role in that. However, TV has. Two problems, you know. I I think uh, the first problem is television creativity has uh, has a lot of ground to catch up. You cannot have shows that premiered, you know, reality or game shows that premiered 20 years ago. Still, if they are still leading shows on your network, there is a problem. There, it's just a simple problem of inadequate creativity. You, you know, television still does, you know, good content, but we all complain about regulation, FDI restrictions, etc. you know, foreigners not being welcome, but a lot of segments have been just kept alive because of those restrictions. If, if it was full fledged global competition that we see in many other sectors of uh, many sectors of media would have died. You know, I, I don't even understand what happens in radio. You know, why it just, there are literally times when the same song is playing across multiple stations. You keep switching, you don't listen to the song, you keep switching and you keep getting the same song. And when you, you know, it's not because it's probably the best song or the, or, 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 you know, a song that the whole nation must listen to. It's because it's the song that's available cheapest, if not free. Now there is a serious creativity problem or content problem in media in general, in TV, in print, in radio, et cetera, et cetera. The other problem is that we still, you know, we are still not very, you know, we, 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 are, we are not building brands. Again, the same issues that, you know, there is not enough distinction that we are creating between channel A and channel B. There are, there are sectors where it's automatically happening because like sports, you, you know, it's available exclusively on one channel, but by and large, there is, there is a huge problem of that. And now the third thing is that when you're getting, you know, the world has moved, the world of content has moved from being just a creative business. And I think, as I told you that I believe that our creative, uh, you know, uh, agenda needs to step up, but the world has moved from the world of media has moved from being just a creative business to a business of creativity and technology. 
and by and large media companies no offense my friend but by and large media companies think changing a bulb is the climax of technological skills we have you know we set up a business that's the last time we want to see an engineer or a technology guy come and set up my sets put the lights on make sure that in tv teleprompter works the rotary machine works and get the hell out of my life that's not working you know a complete creative experience requires you to leverage the power of technology and if you do that and i'm not saying that technology just even in in building you know look at the amount of uh, technology that goes in creating visual content it it can it can scale up a great deal and uh, if you do that you it's it's a great business model you can open up new markets smaller countries like korea like turkey they are exporting content globally and and creating a sustainable economic model through that and a country like india is not able to you know our content does not generally travel even from one state to another and uh, so that is so, a, so let's take your tv let's take your tv point to a logical conclusion so today let's say that about 880 million people watching tv you got about maybe 450 million people watching youtube and then you got maybe about 120 million watching the other ott platforms on an unduplicated way assuming that there is more creativity and tech happening in both youtube and all the otts are you saying that this number will dwindle for tv in favor of the other platforms you know look you must understand one thing one of the one of the great advantages tv has is that it's also supplying a lot of content to streaming services so there is you know that that and that because you're creating that content and monetizing it across two screens it creates a, a certain advantage but i think we are coming to a you know and the other big advantage that television has is that it's really cheap you know uh, i think uh, to get a whole suite of entertainment sports movie and news channels for anything from 150 to 250 rupees in this country is still possible and that that gets you the basic content so that that i think is a huge advantage and uh, big, that also keeps the pressure artificially high on uh, on streaming services because you know when you are pricing content for subscribers you have to keep in mind the competitive environment and if tv is so cheap streaming services can only be so expensive you know so that is an advantage that tv has but i don't see how it it will be sustainable forever so unless we change the creative game and really bring in high quality talent make the right investments and create content that travels beyond our immediate geography that we that we create content for there is a problem and then there is this whole issue of building brands you know whether every body i mean you know uh, whether it is the production house as a brand you know hollywood is as much known for its celebrity talent as it is known for its celebrity or or, or well known production uh, studios there so you we have an opportunity to do all that if we don't do that i think we will we will struggle okay now on the other part that you talking about between advertising versus subscription what exactly is your you've known the consumers pretty well are they going to, how much are they willing to pay for content if anything i mean we of course print is horribly subsidized we'd love to see them but how much is a is the capacity of a consumer to pay for a newspaper then pay for a tv subscription and then and or a dth or a cable subscription and so on and so forth and the otts and all the other platforms so so vikram i think what would be your sort know, of general of advice that you would give to how a person would actually spend his money a consumer would spend his money how we, how can monetize subscription so first of all look we are in mass media and both the words are equally important media as well as the mass so you need to have a proposition that allows you to be attractive to the largest sex section of people i totally get that however everything doesn't need to be sold to everyone you know by definition a mercedes sells uh, sells much less than a maruti but a mercedes makes money uh, on on the each on on each car that it sells and so does maruti Uh, some people play the volume game some people play the you know premium game and we should be able to do that as well uh, i think not doing that is a mistake so 
everyone just going after everybody you know as a result of that there are you know you, your capacity to, or your desire to pay or openness to pay for content is is very different from somebody who's not in your who who doesn't have the same background so i i totally get it that people who are just coming into the formal media consumer groups you know uh, only recently from small towns villages etc people with limited income and limited exposure you should create cheaper products for them that they can afford but there has to be a agenda almost continuous agenda to get everybody up the value cycle this is how everybody succeeds in business that you bring in new consumers and you continuously get you know uh, sort of upgrade that consumer in terms of their ability to 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 pay and they will pay yeah. consumers are willing to pay a great deal in fact often in my experience consumers go an inch more uh, or stretch a little bit more in order to pay for what they originally set out to pay provided and it's a big provided they see a value proposition but as i told you that you know the content that by and large you see across our, our tv channels or in our newspapers or on our radio channels there is really no you know not that much Same more uh, sorry correct there's a lot of sameness to it and this it's about time there is a lot of sameness so why you know asian consumers i've seen across the board from you know across my during my experience of running asia pacific i've seen asian consumers to be very value conscious i can't talk about consumers in other market but here but value conscious doesn't mean that they are reluctant to pay they want value for money and we are you know we've not done enough in in doing that got it now just i want to move to measurement but before i do that uh on the language front there was a time when mass media or media in india especially tv and even print for that matter was driven by well print was driven by english at one point in time and then of course and then of course hindi was what the tv part was but increasingly the regional play has sort of taken hold in fact you've had a huge role to play as you started the regionalization of star a decade back or, or close to and uh, if tomorrow you're going to be coming out with some platform or i mean you get to get into any content or platform which language would you bet on look i'm a big believer in local languages all local languages uh why would you just because we were ruled for 200 years by the british why this fascination to create a business model that is dependent on english i don't understand that those days are gone and you know look i came to star uh, i did my bit in uh, driving it uh, into regional markets but star's philosophy was very clear you know uh, fox which was then news corp was very clear that they came in as a premium english content provider but very quickly they pivoted and they went into hindi because that was the most uh, attractive language by by the size of population and it worked really well launch of star plus but it's a so i think you know you're in that position in india where you can go and pick up really any language and create a massive business but the question is can you go and disrupt the status quo in that business in that in that market and that is where the problem if you're going to be offering the same kind of content the same proposition that six other players have had then what's the point then you're not going to be able to create much so you know we i, I can give you one example that we went and you know my first acquisition in star was this small channel in a small market called kerala and the channel was called asianet and we at that time everybody thought that you know i was stupid but that stupid that stupidity has really worked brilliantly for us because that channel has created so much value in the core market and it has given us an ability to to compete and win in most markets in south india so it's not about what you which market you go to i mean you know the the joy of 135 crore population is that you could find enough number of people interested in any business that you create question is can you create a great business in the area that you've chosen to great okay now uh, i want to talk briefly on measurement because i i don't know whether you caught sam's piece towards the end when he's giving advice to advertisers and we've clearly 2020 has been we moved two steps back when it's come to tv measurement it's come to print measurement it's been a complete halt 
and of course digital measurement continues to not have any industry sort of sort of measurement kind of thing what would be your demand both as fiki president and as uday shankar on this entire aspect of measurement and would the two be same demands be same or would they be different look as fiki president i am not sure uh, what the demand should be but i think they they won't be different you know one thing about me that i do not speak in different voices what you what i believe as an individual is what i believe as in, in my official capacity so i'll tell you what first of all you know it was really heartening to see sam say a grp is not a grp or a cprp is not a cpr we finally you know i think my my job in media has been done because i i was say, i said i kept saying this for 15 20 years and the fact that vikram sakuja and sam balsara have come around to that view and it's being officially blessed at pitch madison report and wheel is a uh, is is a matter of great satisfaction because as a grp or a cprp is not just a cprp there are cprps and there are cprps number one i mean you but managed to get an inflation in a deflationary year you got inflation on an ipl rate to well over 11 lakhs per 10 seconds that tells that tells right. you the consumers or other advertisers see a grp is not a grp exactly my point you know they are not but you have to create a proposition it people were starved for content ipl was bound to be great and i have to say that uh, you know my erstwhile company and my colleagues in star sports they did an absolutely outstanding job of producing the ipl so there was consumer satisfaction and i think we charged a lot of money and uh, adv- advertisers paid and i'm delighted that uh, we were we were able to deliver on whatever they paid so a grp is not a grp but most important thing is that a sample based measurement vikram was always a suboptimal solution and it was limited by the technology available in the time today when there is it is possible to accurately measure the whole universe and not just a sample why would you not do that and if you are not doing that there is always you you are leaving yourself exposed to uh you're leaving yourself exposed to all kinds of distortions that's that's the real issue there was a time when you could not get real time data etc so you know you picked up some sample and you collected data manually from there and you did that that was fine the world was a different place before that people maintained a diary of what they watched it was as you know as basic as that but today you should be able to measure the whole universe the second thing that i have and it's a controversial point and i'm not sure i you know whether fiki would like would uh, would would endorse this point so i'm making this in my personal capacity why do we need a community rating system this tribal behavior of measuring content is is really totally you know again is a legacy of the past when it was so complicated complica- complicated to measure data etc that we all went and said to somebody okay you come and measure the data for all of us and we'll pay you some money why do we need to do it today if none of the digital technology i mean digital services are subscribing to third party data and they are telling you that they have as many subscribers if you know if i could come and tell you that i have as many subscribers as whatever i had at hotstar and you would believe that and if i gave you the data about their consumption behavior and you would believe that and you would buy advertising and inventory based on that why would you not do why would i not do that for tv i don't get because, because the reason is because today you have three different at least on digital we got three different data sources they all give you different numbers for the same reading so i mean arguably an ott platform will give me a certain number moat will give me another number and a third party will give you a third number which number should i go by you should go by my so, number it is my proprietary information you should go by my number if you know if you you know if you can accept the number that you get from the others why would you not accept the number that I, that you get from there so i i i am not in favor you know my position on this i have never been in favor of uh, of this third party uh, you know uh, measurement structure because we have you know look at the kind of distortion anomalies that we have created in this it's in this country it's almost alarming if not dangerous what is happening in the name of data you know this whole current controversy without going too far into that everything that's happened has happened you know the whole degradation that we are seeing 
uh, whether it is in news or whether it is other controversy is on account of our unhealthy obsession with ratings. Ratings is, are an important tool, but they're a business tool. They're a business tool for engagement between Uday Shankar as the media executive and Vikram Sakuja as media buyer. We, you and I need a currency so that you know that, you know, what, what, what you're getting for what I'm selling. But now suddenly we have, we, over the years, we turned this into a measurement of our machismo. We turned this into a measurement of uh, our success. The data, you know, the, the market share became the end all and be all, not of your business existence, but your entire existence. And that's unhealthy. And that has led to inadequate focus on, you know, that has led to too much focus on tactical, sometimes distorted, sometimes outright corrupt practices and inadequate focus on long term health and strategy of the business. So two corollaries from what you're saying. One is, yes, there, there needs to be a currency, which is why probably if you go to each channel or each platform and use their data, you may not get that currency. But second thing is that if that currency has to be there, do you think it's better that there is a system which is funded maybe as a percent of billings and managed by agencies and advertisers and media owners are kept out of it? So broadcasters are kept out of it, would be more healthy? To be honest with you, I'm indifferent to that. And prob you know, the th basic assumption here that you're making, and I disagree with that assumption, Vikram, is that if media, if broadcasters are involved in that, they will corrupt it and advertisers and agencies will not corrupt it. I, I, I think the proclivity to, for, for that measurement system and that whole thing to be distorted or corrupted remains the same either ways. Who owns it is totally, you know, I, I'm totally indifferent to that. You know that I, and full confession, I played a key role in bringing down TAM and setting up BARC. And I think uh, Bark was uh, Bark has been a huge letdown, but I don't think it's been a letdown because broadcasters and advertisers and agencies were in were stakeholders in this. I think it's been a letdown because we did not create a 21st century. We did not have a vision that's that uh, you know that was in tune with the possibilities in 21st century. So, for a moment, if you have to say moving forward from our learning from the past. Do you think it would be better to again reprivatize if you have to have a currency? You may say that it's still private, right? Currency, which should be, well, right now it is. It's still there's a joint industry body which is sponsoring it. But do you think? And earlier, of course, it was a completely private company like Tam. Do you think it's better? I to think probably just, just, I think just for the controversy that involvement in Bark has created for broadcasters, they should just get get out of there. Okay. That's it's a not worth it. Out of you today. <laughs> okay, and it's 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 not worth all the all the suggestions of impropriety, uh, questions of that. integrity that the broadcasters have faced. Because I think, by and large, broadcasters are clean business people, and they have done a good job. They have serviced the consumers' interest well, and to tar them with the same brush just because there are some issues with bark the issues with bark are intrinsic to the structure and management and capabilities within bark it's not that there was this grand conspiracy of broadcasters coming in to say let's just do this and it is the, uns the unsavory the unsavory fallout is the reason is one good reason for broadcasters to get out of bark and just closing on the last point on that one we've already seen that whatever the 22 to 25,000 crores is the TV adex. There's another 5,000 crores of video coming through YouTube and all the OTTs. Probably that might grow. We, there has been this call for the longest time to have audiovisual ratings also coming out through the, the same sort of uh, rating system. Now in the past, that entire stalemate between measuring ads and content led to a certain impasse. How do you think we should now tackle that same issue? There's still, it's probably the same place where it was when you were maybe debating it. Yes, it is still very much there. And I have no reason to believe that now that I have no authority, I would be able to make a difference. But, you know, look, I'm, you know, my view is very clear on that. That, the, you know, 
you know my position. I've taken this position as the you know uh, leader of Star and and Disney, that if everybody is participating, only then Star would participate. Simply because you know we were the only uh, company that had a substantial stake in streaming as and a substantial share of of uh, television. And if some of the big streaming giants were not participating in that, Star should not participate. Because you just because of stars uh, origins in TV, you star should not just do what the TV people do because if it's if its streaming service is com it is not competing with TV, it's competing with its streaming peers. And if you know if if Netflix does not participate and if Amazon Prime is not participating, why should Hotstar participate? And that position remains the same. I think you know the world has moved beyond uh, this concentrated one company measuring data for everybody this you know the world is moving Vikram, Vikram towards disintermediation and i am fundamentally opposed to creating any kind of intermediary because intermediaries are usually brought in and bark is a great example of that are usually brought in with uh, with good intentions and then the intermediaries start serving only themselves they don't serve either of the two parties that they're supposed to intermediate between fantastic Okay, La -la closing last two questions. You've closely observed the entire advertising and marketing ecosystem, and you've seen how advertisers, agencies, and media owners behave. In this very vibrant and fast growing ad market, which of the three stakeholders have dharm on their sides? Is everybody, do you find, you've dealt with all of them. Do you think everybody is doing uh, equally righteous job or are some people doing it more than others? No, I think by it would be. I think they're all by by and large. I find there there may be individual aberrations, but by and large, as community, it's one of the more honorable communities that I've seen, and I see that now across the board in my capacity. I mean, you know, because I'm involved with businesses beyond media now, I see that, and I have to tell you that I find, you know, my 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 criticism of people in advertising on, on the agency side or uh, in broadcasting or content side, my criticism of them is of not having bold enough vision, you know, sometimes too fixated on the past, being too tactical. But I don't think as a community, it's a dishonorable community. Actually, I think they have, they have done more for this country than they get recognized for. And that's one of the disappointments that I have. I think we have undersold ourselves. This is something that I started with. I think we do not see the role that we have played in this country. You know, if uh, if Unilever is a big company and so successful in this country, of course, its products are the reason why they are successful. And and I'm just taking an example. It's not about Unilever, as you can imagine. But uh, to say that the ad, those people who manage the advertising for Unilever, media buys, and the channels on which Unilever products were advertised, I mean, just imagine if there was no television channel, the biggest product would not find a platform to convey its message day after day with consistency and accuracy and and you know build a national proposition or a brand so i think uh, you know it, media has played a really really positive constructive role in this country really? and uh, because we are not mindful of the deep contribution we make and we we all we ourselves sometimes you know largely get distracted by oh we are entertainment we are glamour and we are all of that we don't take ourselves seriously enough so the world doesn't take us take us seriously enough I think we you know it's a great community and this country there are many things wrong with media but this country would have been a much worse country to live in without media. That's a very very telling statement. Thank you. That's very good. Very heartening. So we can't let you leave without you just telling us a little bit more about what your partnership with James Murdoch is and what can we look all, all of us look forward to in 21? So as you know, Vikram, I, I take a long time to think about things and then I figure out something and then I stick with it until I make it work. I'm in the first phase. I'm still taking a lot of time to think about things, but broadly both James and I are really sort of excited about the potential of technology. And I have a very, high level thesis, which I will, you know, share with you and with our audience today. My whole thesis is that all the mass 
consumption services in this country, services and products, were not designed for the to meet the aspirations of 135 crore people. Whether it is media, you know, just imagine 25 years ago or play back 25, 30 years ago. Me, you know, why private media came up? Not because somebody invited or not because of it was part of a government policy. Private media came up because there was an there was an unmet need, which the official providers were not able to meet, whether it is the DAVP, whether it is Doordarshan, whether it is AIR, whether it is whatever. So entrepreneurship came in to, to bridge the gap. And today we have created, you know, a massive industry around that. I think it's the same with, uh, and that, that, that aspiration is growing today with more people owning mobile handsets and devices, the desire for consuming more content is just growing. And the current structures are grossly inadequate. You can only serve this by using technology in a very, very deep fundamental way, because that's the only way you can create consistent outcomes, which are, which, which are satisfying and which are at scale without bringing down the bank. Similarly, I think areas like education and healthcare, the same thing, education in this country was created, you know, formal education system was created by Macaulay not for the benefit of this country, but to create a small class of, you know, class for the British empire. And after independence, honestly, with commitment, the successive political establishments have built on that, but the foundation has remained the same. Today, the one thing that's common is that everybody in this country, even a beggar, uh, I'm just using this as an example, but even a poor beggar wants his child to be educated because they're very convinced that if their child has to have a better destiny, education is one essential tool. Same for healthcare. Healthcare wasn't built, you know, I mean, hospitals were not created with the hope or with the agenda that everybody needs to, can go there and get treated. So you have this widening gap between aspiration and, and possibility of supply with the best of intent. The one thing that we have in, with us is technology, which can, you know, not everybody needs to go to a school to learn. Not everybody needs to go to a hospital. You know, COVID has told us that you can be at home and, and do a lot of things, including get yourself treated. Most doctors were not available, but we got ourselves treated in using technology. And even though we were not ready for it, just imagine the power of technology. If you have the strategy, you're ready for it and you build that. So for the rest of my life, I want to just give it a shot. You harness the power of technology to meet the needs of people who are being badly or underserved right now. I come from that part of the world. As you know, I come from Bihar. I have some exposure to what the underserved population's aspirations are and what the what are the challenges that they are facing. Hopefully, I'll be able to do something towards that. Uday Shankar, thank you so much. As always, you promised, uh, you've delivered all that you promised. It was uplifting. It was provocative. It was differently thought provoking, maybe controversial also, but very, very uplifting. Thank you ever so much for this lovely conversation. Thank you, Vikram. Delighted to be, you know, having, uh, as I told you that I, I have uh, packed my bags and I didn't want to talk about media, but you are one of the oldest friends that I have in media. So it was a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure. Thank you. Over to you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Shankar and Mr. Sakuja.